so apparently today is like there was some kind of big market and like there are all these big street performers right now on um, this pedestrian street that we have and um, tomorrow's a big marathon and so like people are everywhere and we rode our bikes from um, like really close to this area like all the way across the river and back and it was so beautiful we got to watch the sunset over the city like the performers are so talented they're all singing stuff um, in Russian and not in English which is like super rare and magical uh, I had a great time with my friend like I'm just flying on cloud nine right now. The weather is wonderful. Like, I don't even really need this jacket, but I was just afraid that it would get cold when the sun, sun went down. Like, today has been super duper fabulous and has been a great reminder of why I love this city. And I need that every now and again. Oh, we're coming up on the fire twirlers. If you'd like to see the fire twirlers. Y'all thought I was excited last month. Look at me now. Look at the short sleeves and Hope you can see that. Chacos! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm going to the park. I bought a picnic blanket last week. So today I'm gonna go find me a little grassy knoll somewhere and study. Well, study, maybe. I did bring stuff to study. So yeah, things are looking up and up, except I see some rain clouds. So if I get rained on, I'm out of luck, but Luckily, I'm not going in the rain cloud direction. I'm going the other way. So maybe it'll be fine. It started raining at the park. All that brightness for nothing. Oh well. I got to read for a little while. And there's an English bookstore pretty close to here, so... All is not lost. Hey, uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my man John Skelly. I've been singing songs that I've only ever heard John Skelly sing. So I'm not really sure how to look them up, because I don't know who originally sang them, but... Uh, I've only heard them via the Praise and Worship Band at Geyer, so shout out to you, man. You've got great taste, and, uh, you know, I miss the choir every now and again. Sometimes our church um, sings Russian versions of those songs, but I do uh, always think of you. So far, I haven't gotten them to do Days of Elijah, but when I do, I'm going to teach them the woo thing. It's going to be awesome. Hello. Ooh. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Cultural Moments with Sarah. Now, you might be asking yourself, Sarah, if you live in a place where most people look like you and you don't talk to them, how do they know you're an American? Well, number one, only an American will wear a llama headband. Number two, only an American or a Brit would wear a What the Dickens t-shirt. That is definitely not a Russian style shirt. Number three, only an American will wear chacos. And number four, only an American would wear workout shorts outside whenever they're not intending to work out if they're a woman. Because fashion here is no joke. Also, Americans are like way more hydrated on actual water than Russians. Uh, they get most of their hydration by drinking tea at all hours of the day. And regardless of how hot it is outside. In fact, I think it's good for you to drink hot tea when it's hot outside because it makes you sweat and therefore cools you down. Which... The sweat may actually cool you down here because it's not humid and there's actually wind all the time. So I think it might actually serve. It's got intended purpose. But nonetheless, sweating is gross. And uh, deodorant, especially among older and especially men, has not really made the big impact here that it has made, say, in America. Especially because the most popular form of deodorant is spray deodorant. Now, I don't have any scientific reason to believe that spray deodorant is like less effective than like actually made physical contact with my physical armpit deodorant, but there's just something about it that makes me think, no, there's no way that can be effective. And if people do use deodorant, that's pretty much what they use. Now, um, it's really bright. I can't see my phone screen at all. So uh, I'm gonna put my sunglasses on and I'm gonna go do some accounting. Y'all, this is how you know it's summer, when the Transformers come out. It's my favorite part of every year. lady who comes I think twice a month we've at least paid her twice a month based on the accounting 
uh, to come clean. Wow, this looks really bad. Yeah, to come clean our office. And uh, right now it's Ramadan. So I was in class yesterday. I was teaching, whatever. I hear Josh, my boss, say the word Quran. I'm like, why is he saying the word Quran? I come out, he's, he's drawing an example of something on the board, and our cleaning lady is sitting down. And he, I realize he's talking about like spiritual stuff, like God is perfect, we are sinners, no matter what we do, we can't make our way to him, so Jesus came down. And I was like, my eyes got real big. My kids went away, I told them goodbye. Put my book up and I came and sat at the table with them. And together, we got to tag team, share the good news with her using this resource I've been studying. And it was so cool. And like, I got to actually use the stuff I've been learning specifically for this purpose. And she cried and talked about how she wanted to get forgiveness. And it was so hard. And um, he kept saying like, we want you to read with us. I want you to read with us. Like Jesus is the only way. Um, and it was, it was really cool to be able to use that resource that, um, that I'm studying because a lot of times I feel like maybe it's not the most useful resource because people here, even though they come from a Muslim background, they don't know enough about that background for the sort of things that we're talking about to really connect to them and they don't care that they're sinners. Like the premise is, you're a sinner, that's a problem, let's fix it. That's a problem is a, doesn't commute to them, sort of, like they they're like, it's fine. Um, anyway, so she was already thinking about it. She had prayed that morning to Allah, like, I, I want forgiveness. Show me how to get forgiveness. And we showed her and it was just really cool. So please be lifting her up. Um, we're going to try to plug her in with some different local people. And of course, like just stay with her, um, as much as we can at work. It was a really awesome opportunity, a side-by-side -side experience um, with my boss, and I hope to have many more like it. One of my goals with one of my teammates is to go out and try to find people that are more solidly in their uh, Muslim background. So it's really easy to tell this time of year because like in the winter, everyone's equally bundled up and covered, uh, but this time of year, the not Muslim people are not covered at all, and the Muslim ones are really covered. Uh, which makes it a lot easier. Okay, I filmed the documentary today. I'm gonna, they are gonna show it at the college, hopefully at the time that I'm in town, when it's all done, um, and I'm really excited to watch it. Not the me part, but the everyone else part. So the part she wanted to do today, she was like, wear the same thing, okay, but it's cold outside. So I wore my coat and the scarf, because this coat looks funny without the scarf. She's like, this is what you were wearing? And I was like, well, underneath. <laughs> um, but, so basically I just like walked around like over and over and like this off my phone, took my headphones out and stuff and it was really weird. I mean it wasn't unpleasant like I think it's gonna look cool whenever she like puts it all together but it was like so weird to do and like somewhere in the back of my mind I've always thought I could be an actress like if I wanted to. Like I'm a really good like pretender and like I can memorize stuff. Like I'd be a great actress just like that. Uh, but today I realized that would suck and I don't want to do that and that would be bad because it gets kind of monotonous doing the same thing over and over again. And I didn't even have lines. And I was like so nervous. And like I was walking down the street and like my eyes were kind of tearing up. And like for no reason, like I wasn't upset like at all. And like the wind was sort of in my eyes, maybe that was it. But I was blinking a lot more than usual. And I know it's gonna look like I'm blinking like a crazy person whenever I'm like on the, like when I'm, they're showing me. Almost got to walk into this really famous library though. So would you like to hear the story of this famous library? Um, once upon a time, like, I don't know, 200 years ago, maybe a little bit longer, um, this guy and this girl got married. And as a wedding present, the guy got the girl this beautiful house that had three different balconies. So like he had to buy basically like three different sections of the building to get her all three balconies, and especially have them built and everything. Well then, they got divorced. And like, this isn't like they got divorced in 1970. They got divorced like in the 1800s, like when it was like shameful to get divorced. And not only did he divorce her, he moved in to the house next door with his new wife. Crazy. So now that library is like, or that building is like the main library of the university. And it's like so pretty and the balconies are still there. And supposedly there's like a cave inside. 
but only students at the university are allowed to get in. So none of us, none of the Americans that live here have ever been in it. True story. So I've been saying for forever that I'm gonna read War and Peace, so I found the PDF of it today on the internet. It's 2,882 pages long. I've been reading it for, oh, I don't know, half an hour on page 35. And I have a large document in which I'm keeping track of all the characters because I've heard it gets a little confusing. So I might end up making it into like a, a spreadsheet. I'll let you guys know how this goes, but so far I really like it. I might even like it better than Anna Karenina and I really liked Anna Karenina, so. It's the day before my trip to London. It's technically sort of the day of because we leave tonight to go to the airport at like 2, 2.30 a.m. So, uh, I mean, technically said it before, but in my heart, it's the day of. I'm gonna go see C.S. Lewis's house and Avengers in English. <laughs> and um, I'm just gonna, yeah, be in a place where all around me is a language I understand. And I can accidentally eavesdrop on people instead of doing it on purpose. And people are still gonna make fun of my accent, so that's not gonna be better. But uh, it'll be good to get out of town for a little while have some rest, sort of, and I'm really excited to go to the bookstores. Like, I bet the indie bookstore game is so strong in England and I cannot wait to see it. And uh, I'm also excited about possibly the uh, availability of ethnic food. I don't give a crap about English food because based on everything I know about England, their food is basically like Russian food and that it is tasteless and boring. And they have weird crap that I don't like. Um, however, they have more immigrants from places whose food I do like than people than this country does um, so I'm more likely to get good Chinese food good Indian food real Indian food and maybe if I'm really really lucky something slightly resembling Mexican food here's hoping Y'all, they filmed part of Harry Potter here. Oh my gosh. Hello, I'm back from London. Um, I had to go to the doctor yesterday. I'm not sick or anything. Um, the government wants to make sure I don't have any communicable diseases that I might give to my students, so. That's why I went. It was good. It was chill-ish. Um, we had to go through this whole process of finding a place that specifically deals with foreigners because the local places are a little sketchy and they are more considerate of our lack of language skills. So we went with our administrator. Um, she was with us every step of the way like helped us into the rooms, helped us understand what people were saying, even though she also doesn't speak English, so she mostly was just like, she would change his words into words that I knew um, in Russian, which was very helpful. And the only part that was bad was the bathroom in there was really sketchy, and we had to prove that we weren't on drugs, so we had to use the bathroom, and there was no toilet seat, no toilet paper, nothing to dry our hands on, and the only other people in there had been men um, of a certain type, and so it was kind of gross. But there was a mop in there, so I cleaned up and, you know, it was fine. Tonight at home, we're having a um, Chronicles of Narnia watch party, which I am actually just leaving from. I have my last class of the semester tonight, so I'm gonna go teach that. Uh, we've been reading Holes, which has been really great. I love Holes. Um, no one here has ever heard of it, like, no one knows the book, no one knows the movie, and I find that to be such a travesty. And so we basically had three extra classes at the end of the semester, and I was like, okay, we're reading a book. Yeah, so happy almost end of May. It's summer, look, t-shirt. Oh, a clock. We don't have those in America. 